My name is Wayne Smith. I was a special agent with the U.S. Department of Justice, Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs, and then later the Drug Enforcement Administration. I was from a cotton mill town in North Georgia. Mm -hmm. Neither of my parents had graduated from high school. I had, uh, we lived in a company-owned house. We shopped at a company store. Uh, I never expected to go to college. When I got old enough to go to work in the cotton mill, I worked summers in the cotton mill for a dollar and a quarter an hour. Uh, never expected to do anything. I don't know what I was, I had no, I had no ambitions about what life was going to do for me. So what did you actually do under that occupation, the DEA? Well, I was sworn in in Atlanta in June 29th of 1969. I moved to Washington, D.C., where I went to a 10-week basic training school. Uh, after graduation from that school, I returned to Atlanta, where I was assigned for the next probably 15 years. So on many of your assignments, did you ever go international? After I was uh, stationed in El Paso, I made uh, several trips to Bolivia and Colombia. Uh, spent a good bit of time down in South America. What was work like in South America? It was scary. Uh, I, we were in Bogota, and the embassy in Bogota was like a fort. How bad were the, uh, was the, can I say, drug, drugs there? Well, Bogota, of course, was the intergalactic capital of cocaine trafficking, and uh, all the coke that came to the United States came out of Colombia, or not all of it, but enough of it that no nobody else was playing with the Colombians. They routinely killed people who did dare disagree with them. There's, uh, they murdered judges and lawyers and anybody that got in their way. Did you ever fear that you were in danger there? I think I was too stupid to realize I was in danger. Uh, I, I, you know, I knew the big picture. I knew things could be, but I always felt like that eh, not me. So out of your assignments, what, do you have a favorite one in mind? Well, I love the, the time I spent in El Paso. Uh, it was, uh, initially I was just working in the intelligence center. I might be sitting there and get a call from a DEA agent in, in Karachi, Pakistan one day. And the next day, I might be talking to a state police officer in North Florida. So were there any least favorites? That least mind? favorites. A customs agent who was a very, very good friend of mine got shot in the back and was killed by another police officer during the traffic stop. And I think probably the worst night of my life. So when something like that, no good, comes out of it, how do you mentally deal with that? It, it's... You know, you're really tempted to just ignore it and pretend it didn't happen and go on, but you eventually have to just really deal with it. The good definitely outweigh the bad. Well, the it job. did for me. I, I enjoyed the job. I enjoyed the challenge. It was like you had a license to hunt people. That's the best, the best game in town. Some research that you wrote a book titled the Waffle House Diaries. Yes. Could you give us a little summary about the book, the, well, the contents? Yeah, it, uh, it it grew out of my wife telling me, you know, you've told that same story at three different parties and everybody's getting tired of hearing it. Why don't you write that down? And we we spent a month in Guatemala up in the mountains in Panajachel and we had an apartment where we could sit and look out at the lake and, and just, it was just the most restful place I'd ever been. And I took my laptop and I sat up there on that balcony and stared at the lake and wrote the book. Could you elaborate on why you chose that title? Well, yeah, it, it's a strange story. When I first got recruited, my first partner recruited me. He met me at a Waffle House. And then I found over the next 30 years that anybody could meet anybody in a Waffle House and nobody paid any attention. It was always the perfect place to meet an informant or to do an undercover deal because, I mean, look, you go in a Waffle House at two o'clock in the morning, you're not gonna find many Episcopal priests sitting around. You know, mostly it's gonna be night people and nobody looks out of place. So 
and it was just sort of a theme that recurred throughout my career that you would, you know, where are you going to meet? Well, we'll meet him at the Waffle House. So it just sort of seemed natural. What do you think is like the most dangerous drug in the U.S. that you've been like working around? Well, you know, the, the synthetic opiates mm -hmm. have created a horrible nightmare. The, the drug fentanyl, which is unbelievably powerful, is now available. It was never available on the streets when I worked, so I didn't have to deal with that. When I worked, I guess the biggest problem during my whole career was methamphetamine. Mm -hmm. And along towards the end of my term, before I retired in 99, meth had gotten to be such a nightmare in this part of the country that it was all anybody could work on. That's all we did was work meth cases. I was one of the first 25 people hired, one of the first 25 people who worked for the Transportation Security Administration. And I spent that year developing the curriculum for training airport screeners and traveling from city to city, putting on training seminars, training employees, getting them certified, putting them to work at airports, and then going on to the next city and starting over. Do you have any regrets about the life you've lived? Absolutely not one second's regrets. I've just, I've just enjoyed what I did. I got to do things and go places I'd never go otherwise. I ran out of gas at 14,000 feet up in the Andes Mountains and just stood there and thought, you know, what's a poor redneck cotton mill boy from North Georgia doing on top of the world? But it was great and I really enjoyed it. There is one quote to sum up the life of a DEA agent, what would it be? Oh, <laughs> it's probably that little piece of calligraphy that hangs above my desk right now. It says, uh, minutes and hours and days of boredom and tedium punctuated by seconds of stark terror. And that was pretty much it. You know, everything went well until it went bad. And when it went bad, it went bad real quick and real bad. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do?